All right. <laughs> I'll give you some of the... My engineer was a hell of a good... He was a North Carolina hillbilly. Al Aiken. Slow, never ran. Didn't wear shoes until he got in the army. I don't think. Well, we were supposed to make a trip out of... Where were we at? Oklahoma City. Our graduation trip, they're going to send us to Map Lake Charles, Louisiana, then go down. This is a token graduation. Go down over the Gulf of Mexico, bring yourself back uh, Key West, and navigate yourself back home. They're like a big round robin trip. That's mainly for the navigator to work. We're approaching Lake Charles. Louisiana, which is near New Orleans, and there used to be a B-24 base there in order to go in there for refuel. And we're going to put the landing gear down. Oh, back up. Al Aiken, our engineer, got drunk that night before. I don't like to drink. You don't like to drink, you like to fight. Well, he ended up in jail. And we're scheduled for our graduation mission, and our engineer is in jail. So I said, Hook, go talk to operations. Let's see what. And they operated, said, We'll give you a young fellow back up for, for the trip. I forget, his name is Maxwell. I think I can ring the bell. Maxwell gets on the plane, and we're flying down towards Lake Charles, and the number three is Ruffies. He says, Feather it. And my pilot says, how are we going to put the gear down? That's the pump of the gear on number three. He said, feather it. He said, you go back to the waist. He calls me up. He says, Yo-Yo wants me to feather number three, and I can't, I'm not going to belly land this airplane. I said, what's wrong? I said, he says, gear won't go down. I said, hold still. I go down in the, in the belly and look. It's not the main gear, it's the nose wheel. It's a hydraulic lifting gear that goes up in a cycle and drops down and through a, a well that opens up. Because the navigator crawls by there to get up in the nose. So I'm a, I come back up and I said, the nose wheel won't lift, the hydraulic's leaking. He says, yeah, what are we going to do? We're not going to lay on the nose wheel. We'll, we'll wear the nose right off. It's one of the things to happen. Where the nose wheel, we come in and the metal just wears right back six, eight feet, and the airplane's totally disparate. I said, stall, go around. And I took it to co-pilot. Let's try something. I don't know if we can get away with this. I put my parachute harness on. I wasn't carrying it because it gets in the way. I didn't have it on. Step it on, not the parachute. I said, now, I'm going to lay down behind the nose wheel on my back. It's a, like a big open hole. You get behind me and you wrap your legs around something saw and grab hold of my harness. If I, the windstream catches me, pull me back because I'm going to be hanging out a little bit. I lay down on my belly, on my back, and he's hanging on to me for dear life. He's got his legs wrapped around an upright or something. And I put my feet up on the nose wheel. Nose wheel's about this big around. And I push it, and I can move it. So, okay, let's push it. The hydraulic was limp. I push it, I crawl a little further, push it up a little more, and he's yelling at me, no more, no more. And I said, okay, no more. I give it a hard push, and the push it got up on top of, this, of its circle, and comes down on the other side. And once it comes down, an arm locks. I save the 324 by that. Otherwise, we'd wipe it out. But if I, my feet got out too far and the wind grabbed me, I'm out of. I'm, I'm in trouble. That's one of them. <laughs>